City Guitar School, there are a few uh, essential tools that you need to learn to uh, start rocking right away. So let's go for it. First part is, of course, knowing your guitar, right? And as you can see, there's lots of different things going on here, and so we're just going to go over briefly what the different parts are and what they do. Okay, so first of all, you have the body, pretty self explanatory, just the body of the guitar, right? And then you have what's called the neck, also called the fretboard. Okay, then you have your headstock, also known as just the head of the guitar. Down here is the bridge. The bridge, as you can see, is keeping the strings in place right here. Right? Okay, then you move up. This is what is called the nut. And notice there are grooves cut into, cut into this. And this is keeping the strings in place up here, where the neck is. And then, of course, you have your tuners. This way it turns up, so that is counterclockwise, clockwise, makes it go down. And let's tune it right back up. And there we go. Okay? And so these are simply just your tuning pegs. Okay. The three most important things that you need to know in order to navigate the fretboard. First of all, and what I mean by fretboard is this. This is the first one. Frets. What are frets? Frets are simply metal bars that divide the neck into different notes. So in the spaces right here, which are really what you're considering the frets, the frets are not necessarily just the bars, but it's the spaces where you put your fingers. Each one of these spaces is a different note. And if you listen, it goes up in tone. Right? Okay. Now, you'll notice there are dots on your guitar. The dots are simply markers. They're there to help you find your way. And the fret numbers go as follows. First fret, second fret, third fret, notice the marker. Fourth fret, fifth fret, marker again. Sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and so on. Okay? Uh, on your left hand, um, this is how we identify our fingers. For guitar players, the index finger is the first finger. Middle finger is the second finger ring finger is the third finger and your pinky is the fourth finger. The thumb just lives right here behind the neck. Okay, so first finger, second finger, third finger, and fourth finger. So the string numbers go as follows. Sixth string, fifth string, fourth string, third, second, and first, right? So a good way to remember this is that the thickest string is the highest number. The thinnest string is the lowest number. So once again, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now we have all of the, all of the three numbers that we need to know in order to navigate the fretboard. You're gonna go ahead and pick up your guitar, and what I want you to do is take your first finger, index, put it on the first fret, which is here, of the first string. So that would be right here. And go ahead and just pluck that note. Okay, nice and easy. You don't have to dig into it. Never sounds good when you dig into it. And notice something. My finger is arched, it's nice and up, and I'm playing with my fingertip, and my finger is right next to the, to the fret, right next to the middle bar, not on it, but right next to it. What happens is, if you get it further away, notice it starts to get a little fuzzy. Okay, so make sure that you're always playing with your fingertips and your fingers are close to the bottom fret. Let's do one more. So now, we're gonna take our second finger, put it on the second fret of the third string. So that's going to be right here. Second finger, second fret, third string. And there we go. So now you've played a couple notes, now it's time to really get things going. The best way to hold a pick is to place it on top of your first finger, just like this, and having the pointy end facing out. And just get it comfortable. 
you know? It doesn't have to be in an exact place, but it just has to be pointing out, it has to be on top of your finger. The way I like to think about it is imagine that you're pulling a trigger, right? You put your finger in, you place the pick right where this joint is, right there. You put your thumb on top, and there you go. Now just try doing this a couple times, and notice that when I'm picking, it's really not, not hard at all. Just a nice, easy pick. So now, we're going to try something. We're going to try putting our first finger on the first fret of the first string, and just plucking it. Now, let's do the second finger on the second fret, first string, pluck it again, and then third finger on the third fret of the first string. Nice. Just played our first notes. Okay. So, let's move on to phase two. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our first finger, put it on the second fret of the third string, and notice something. That my first finger is arched. I'm playing with my fingertip, and it's right next to the bottom fret. Okay? Then we're going to take our second finger, our middle finger, put it on the second fret of the first string. Okay, now the last step is taking our third finger, putting it on the third fret of the second string. And here's our D chord. Now, one very important thing as well is keeping constant pressure. If you let go of the chord, it will not sound good. It will sound pretty bad. And notice my thumb. My thumb is nice and flat, resting easy on the back of the neck. Okay, you don't want you to have your thumb like that, nor like this have room to move your fingers around. Notice that my hand, with my thumb here, my hand can have lots of room to move around. Now, back to the chord. First finger here, second finger here, third finger here. Okay. Strum from the fourth string down. Nice, gentle strum. Right? And that's the D chord. Okay. So let's move on to the next chord, which is the G chord also known as G major. D major, G major are always known as just D and G. Okay? So anytime you see one letter, always know that it's a major chord. Okay, next one is the G chord. Second finger, third fret, sixth string. First finger, second fret, fifth string. Third finger, third fret, all the way to the first string. Look at that. Look at my, how my hands are spread out. And notice my thumb is still resting comfortably. And my wrist is not too bent. My wrist is staying pretty straight. Okay. Let's go ahead and play that chord. You're going to strum all six strings. And just strum down a couple times. Just get used to it. And make sure not to dig into the strings. Just imagine that you're sweeping the floor with a broom. And that's how you should be strumming. Okay, last chord. Then we're going to do the A7 chord. The A7 chord is the easiest of the bunch. And here, here's how you play it. Take your first finger, put it on the second fret of the fourth string, right here. Take your second finger, put it on the second fret of the second string. And notice how there is a string in between. It's the third string. Make sure that you can hear it. One thing that happens, if your fingers are not arched enough, they will come down and block the string. Okay, So make sure that your fingers are nice and up, playing with your fingertips, constant pressure, fingers against the bottom fret. This one you strum from the fifth string down. So we're strumming from here. And notice how all the strings are ringing out. They all sound really nice. If your strings are not ringing out, there's going to be one of three problems. One, your fingers might not be arched enough, so they're blocking strings. Two, there might, be enough, might not be enough pressure. And then three, your fingers might not be close enough to the bottom fret. And there you go. And those are our three chords. Mm -hmm.